What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 9 of the Python 3 basics tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be doing is uh, coming back to our tic-tac-toe game, coming back to reality, and um, addressing the fact that when you write a program, you know, you have the best intentions, but whenever you start letting users play with your program or other programmers use your program and kind of build on top of it, um, different people think in different ways and people start trying to use your program in ways you didn't intend or didn't think of and things start to go wrong and then with the users sometimes your users are just stupid or um, or they're trying to do something or they don't understand or you didn't explain it well enough uh, for them to use uh, what you've created the way you intended or whatever or people just try to break your stuff um, all these reasons mean we should try to handle for errors. Most of the time, like an example would be like when you go to someone's website and you try to visit a URL that doesn't exist, you usually get some sort of decently looking, you know, 404 page that says, hey, this page doesn't exist, go back home, something like that. Well, if the programmer doesn't specifically handle for that 404, you are going to get a very disgusting, like black and white, just 404, and it's going to look pretty darn bad um, and it's going to discourage people from staying on your website and in fact most of the time if someone gets that they're going to bounce off of your website the same thing is true with your app if your app just crashes people have very little patience um, so let's talk about error handling so probably the biggest error that's going to happen is somebody's going to try to play tic-tac-toe and gosh darn it they don't like the idea that we started with zero they want to play on row three dang it so they're gonna do that right um and again right now we're kind of hard coding things but later we're going to ask the user where do you want to play they're going to input where they want to play so let's say they input a three and we run it and oh it looks so ugly it looks so ugly now in um in sublime text this is what we see and basically we're looking for the what's called title cased where Every, the letter of every word is capitalized. Um, so in this case, the title is, or the, the error, the title cased error is index error. And officially it's actually at the end of the error. So we've been running everything in sublime text. And maybe now would be a, a good moment for us to address running things from the console. Um, the other way you would actually run a program uh, is, is probably not in your editor. So let's go ahead and open up a uh, console. So on, you know, uh, at least on Linux, you can right click and open console here or open terminal here. Um, on Windows, you can just come up to the ad address bar up there and just type CMD. And that'll open up a terminal right where we are. And control plus is not a valid. Um, let's see, properties. Let's see if I can do this quickly. Let's go 28. Okay, good enough. Um, so now let's say we want to run tutorial 9. So the way we would do that is one, you could type just Python. And currently that is referencing Python 3.7 for me. But if you have multiple versions of Python, by the way, quit is a built-in function. <laughs> and you can exit. That's just type by default now. I just type it. Um, you could also do like, you probably should, you should be able to get away with can maybe control. No, you can't get out with control C. So anyways. Um, what do we do if we want to actually run uh, a Python program? Well, if you want to specify, you can say pi-3.7. If I hit enter here, it still opens up the same version I'm on. So we could say Python 3.7, and then what do we want to run? So I think it was tutorial, we're on tutorial 9. So we'll run tutorial 9, and we'll actually see the very, you know, this is the full traceback. It doesn't have that extra stuff that we saw in Sublime Text. But basically, this is the error, and then it gives us a little snippet of code that it saw, it tells us in what file did we see it. In most cases, when you get an error like this, the real error that you're looking for is at the bottom of your script. If you're working in a much larger project, though, um, sometimes it can get buried because the traceback literally uh, traces back the error and, and goes in the order that the program ran. So sometimes at the end of your code or at the end of the traceback, it does have an error, 
But the thing that caused that error is sometimes buried deep because it was a different script that erred, and then the errors trans, uh, transgress, I don't know, continued through until we got to your, the current place that you're working. So sometimes it won't be at the very, very bottom. But this is always what you're looking for. You're just looking for that. But it will always give you the file name and then on what line did, did, well, here it starts with where it occurred, but then here it also gives you line nine specifically, where did it happen? So on line 16, we made the call um, to modify here. Um, so at first it says line 16, that's where that happened. But then specifically on line nine, we threw the index error. And if you ever get an error and you have no idea what it means, Google, it's your best friend. Just go to google.com. I probably could have just typed it right there. <laughs> Index out of range means, and eh, gosh, it's been searched so many times that there's even a thing up here. Sometimes you'll need to add Python to the end of what you're looking for, but it's the same result in this case. Um, or maybe if you're using like a package and you've got some sort of really crazy looking error, you could add the package that you're using with Python. And by package, I mean an, like some sort of third party library. Um, like TensorFlow is a machine learning library, um, stuff like that. Anyway, for now, I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to close out of here, and we're going to continue along. I just wanted to show you that normally you won't see all this. This is because I'm using Sublime. Okay, so let's talk about how do we handle for this error. I just want to clean up that stuff. I don't know how to make it go away while I'm busy working. So how can we handle for this error? Well, we know it, you know, we first of all, we can kind of, like, I can predict this error is going to happen. Eventually, someone's going to have fat fingers. They're going to accidentally input, like, rather than um, a number, maybe they hit a letter, or maybe they hit a number too big, or maybe they're just curious to see what happens, okay? Um, it's going to happen. Um, it's just inevitable with this, this type of program. So, we already knew it was coming, but how could we just generally handle for it? Well, there is a try and accept statement that we can use. So we could say accept, um, and then we'll just say, well, we'll just print, um, something went wrong. Okay, so then I'll, I'll change row to three again, run it, and then it says something went wrong. So at least this time we handled for it. Um, we didn't do anything about it, but we handled for it. And what we could do is just ask the, at this point, ask that user to do, you know, input again, try again, <laughs> something went wrong, try again, basically. But this isn't very helpful necessarily to your user or to a programmer who's actually working with your code and like, is like, okay, thanks. Like that's not helpful to me, right? <laughs> So we could take it a step further, and remember it was an index error, a title case index error. So we can actually say accept index error as E, something went wrong. Well, we could say, um, you know, uh, something like this. We, we, we could say, um, um, I'm trying to think of exactly how, how I want to word it. Like I would say um, error, error. Did you input row column between zero uh, as zero, one, or two? That's probably the way I would do it. Um, and then I might comma E after that. So we're just throwing in the actual error here. So we could run that again. And then now the error is error. Did you input a row column as zero, one, or two? And then, um, or maybe make sure you input. So maybe make make sure you input. Otherwise, this sounds like you, that's the mistake you made. Um, and then and then we'll just print out the error there. Something like that. Okay, we're, we're, so this isn't actually a program I'm going to distribute. So <laughs> so I guess I am actually distributing this program. Anyways, um, we can make this better. But you get the idea. Now we've handled very specifically for an index error. The only place I can see an index error happening in this code is here or here. And the only reason I could imagine is somebody entered something that was not a zero, one, or two. Okay, cool. So we've got that handled for, but what if, darn it, what if a programmer is using this and you know, they done goofed and they pass game board or something like that into that function. We run, oh gosh, it's ugly, it's horrible, oh, oh gosh. Okay, 
So how can we handle for that? I mean, as a programmer, I'm expecting you know the my fellow programmers to be smart enough to not make this mistake. But what if they make it? So we could generally handle for it. Um, I'm not sure I would. You might actually want this to throw a pretty hard error. But let's say we wanted to handle for that kind of an error as well. So let's say you've got a program that you just want to run indefinitely. So an example of this is like a web parser. So I've got like a spider that crawls the web for to, to parse news documents uh, to generate sentiment on. Anyways, I want that running all the time. I never want it to crash. So I encase all of the code in many versions of exception handling because I want to I want to catch every exception, including ones I didn't even think about, and I want the code to continue to run. So how can we do that? Well, we can just add another exception. So here we can say accept um, an index error, print that. Otherwise, we can also just accept, and this is just a general exception as e print um, something. Whoops. <laughs> uh, something went very wrong. And then E. Great. OK, now we could run this. And um, what happened? Oh, we didn't pass. OK, so try again. Boom. OK, something went very wrong. Function object is not scriptable. OK, that makes a lot of sense. And we've handled for that error. Again, you might not actually want to ha handle for that specific type of error. You might not want things to proceed um, if someone made that error. You might actually want it to break, and in which case you could uh, force it to break. Um, the next thing, and the only other thing I want to bring up, is that in try and accept, there are two more statements we could pass. You can have try, accept, you can have else, uh, and then you can also have finally. So these are two statements that you'll pretty rarely see, but especially like with finally, you will see this run at the very end. Um, like if you're trying to maintain a connection or something in like some sort of IO operation where if you are to disconnect randomly midstream, it could cause a mess, you would use finally to kind of clean up the mess before the script closes out or something. Um, but just know those exist. If you want to learn more about them, again, you got a friend and his name is google.com. <laughs> there are tons of tutorials on it. I even I have some try accept else finally tutorials. You could search them on YouTube or whatever. Just know those exist. And I just I hate to talk about try and accept and not mention, hey, by the way, but they're very rare. I, I rarely see people actually using them. Um, so just know they exist. OK, so at this point, OK, we've got some basic error handling. Um, you can also uh, cause certain errors, which we can talk about later. Um, but to, to throw an error, you, you can also do the following. So we can, um, here, you can use raise. And this will raise a certain type of exception, and you can raise a very specific one. And so may, there will be times, or there could be times, where you want to purposely do that. Anyway, um, so that's it for error handling. We just wanted to have at least some basic error handling uh, for the doofuses that use our program. And now, I think in the next tutorial, we are ready to start determining who won the game. So we know how we can, we know how we can modify certain positions. We don't yet have any handling for if someone tries to play on top of someone else's position, but that's pretty simple to do. But the one thing that we haven't covered yet, how could we do, is how do we know when someone is one? How do we know when this entire row is ones or twos? Or how do we know when vertically these are all ones or twos? Or diagonally this way or this way? How do we do that? So in the next tutorial, we're going to start talking about how do we determine a winner. And then once we determine winners, we're just going to be able to clean up everything and end up with a uh, mediocre game <laughs> of tic-tac-toe. So uh, with that, uh, I will see you guys in the next video.